Good morning, guys. It actually is morning. Couldn't sleep, so got up. Going to get an early start. I was going to try to get going about 6, but it's 3 in the morning. <clears throat> and I was praying, waking up. I had this message a while. <clears throat> but I've got to put it out now. It's about connecting the body of Christ. Because we've been running around like <laughs> like that, but I don't know what it was, that old story, that Ichabod Crane, that headless horseman. We haven't been connected to the head, which is Jesus. And the reason why I'm saying that, guys, is because if we don't start connecting on a spiritual level, we're not going to stand what's about to come. It might be tomorrow, it might be six months, it might be a year. I don't think it's going to be that long, though. The storm that's coming to bring us to our knees. I'm going to trust in him. It's going to be a manna. We're going to get fed like the ravens. It's going to be manna from heaven. And if you're not connected, you're not going to know where to go or what to do. I'm not a doomsday prepper. I'm not telling you to stack up a bunch of beans and rice. We're going to cook it with. The list could go on and on. Water, you know. I don't know. Maybe you're supposed to, but most of us aren't. We're going to have to trust in Him. And you know what? It's time to prepare because we've been spoiled. Dysfunctional. Sinful. I'm saying that not about. I'm not. This is not a finger pointing. I have too. I'm still in, maybe even in the chastisement stage. I don't know, but reeling from the sin of pride that I didn't think I had. And he wants to his bride without spot, blemish, and wrinkle. So. That one, I did, didn't did see it because I lived with it so long that it just seemed normal, even in the spiritual realm. And I prayed all the time, and I, God, and he did a lot of cool, miraculous stuff for me in my life and others, and, you know. But it's not, it's not a baseball game, God. You don't have to keep a scorecard. You know that Jesus failed math. 99. He left them. He left the one. A bunch of people gave a bunch of money and flashed it around and show he, show ball it is. And not how much different than what the church is doing now. Suppose a church, anyhow. The widow's might. What did Jesus say? She gave more than all of you. She gave from her living. Gideon. You know, 100,000 arm, you know, it, what, 20, 30, or how many ever thousand you had? God said, you have too many. Like, what? Nonsense. What is that, you know? So, but what he's going to do is take care of his bride. Because he wants, well, spot, blemish, and wrinkle. That's the body. So we've got to start connecting, guys. Because... Unfortunately, and we're not going to be able to stop it. And not saying, no matter how much we pray, it's coming because God's allowing it. This storm to come. Because it's going to bring us to our knees. And if we don't connect, if you're the hands, be the hands. If you're the feet, be the feet. This is the scripture he gave us, Ephesians 4. All the way down to 12. And when you read 12, it's it's about for the perfecting of the, of, the, of the body of Christ. How would I know that? Some of this was in a dream. Some of it was in prayer. Combination. We've got to connect. So I'm throwing this out there. You want to connect. Jesus is alive in America. If 
gmail.com. I'm here in Dallas. I got different connections that have, that that are there, and some are I mean that I can connect with. Some of them connected. I mean, most of them are connected with, but in a in a roundabout way. But everything from a sixty million dollar food bank to a ten million dollar one to a really poor church. Prison ministries, other ministries, homeless ministries. So if that's your heart, no, no pressure, no, you know, you got a bad heart if you don't do it. None of that, none of that garbage. Because you might be the hands when I need the feet or whatever, you know. This is this is this was true, sitting right there in that chair right there. That's my prayer chair. You can look about. We can't hardly see it because of the lighting. Because it's so early in the morning. But right above the door is a cross. Real significant to me because there's a door and it's a cross. But I was sitting there in prayer and, and the Lord spoke to me and He said, "Steve, what do you do?" when you want to go to the store. I'm like, oh, all right. You get up and, you know, walk to the door, go to the car, get in it, start it, drive to the end of the street. Depending on which store I'm going to, my brain tells me to go left or right. I mind. Well, what did I do? My feet walked me to the car, but they can't start it. My hands didn't have to start the ignition. My hands can't walk me to the car. My hands and feet can't tell me which direction to go. We all have to become without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. Too many of this all this hokey pokey stuff is coming down in the church, it's supposed to be church, and it's gonna be the true body of Christ. Because if we don't connect, we're not gonna be evil to stand in this day of evil. I'm sorry to tell you that. I'm a watchman warning you. Look at my post about a storm coming to America, but also look at, and it was a year ago, weep and pray between the porch and the altar. 5 a.m. How important 5 a.m. is because it starts the day, there's no distractions, no kids, if you got kids, no job, no, you don't even have to be on YouTube or your cell phone. If you choose not to, it can be quiet, peaceful, prayerful time. So important we do that at 5 a.m. of the nation. And my house is different than yours, but God sees them all. We're connecting. Whatever He's telling you to do, guys, do it now while it's still light. Because one of the ones I put out there, in, in, in part of it, it was some economic stuff that's going to happen in this country. But it's gonna devastate millions. Literally. It's gonna affect us all. Look what they're doing with the, the goofy laws they're making out in California with the truckers now. Look at all the, you know, the inflation. I, I said this from the beginning. What are you gonna do when gas hits 10 bucks a gallon? We're panicking at five. Said it's gonna be that manna from heaven, but like I said, we're spoiled. It's not gonna be, you know, when I was a kid, a chocolate dip cone was a treat. Now you go, God, go to some place that's got 44 flavors or whatever, and you, everywhere you go, and you go in a restaurant, and if the waiter didn't bring you the salt that you wanted, and you drink one the way you wanted, and 
you know, the way you ordered it or whatever. Something's hot or something's too cold. Man, people go ballistic. Not everybody, but, you know, some of us do in our, our heart. We want to, but we just don't say anything, you know, so I'm telling you guys. He's doing it. He's allowing it. And you're like, oh, God, what? Okay. Well, ask Paul. Ask Peter when he denied him three times. Went away and went bitterly. Ask Miriam when she put Moses in a crocodile infested, nasty river. Not knowing if she ever gonna see, in the natural, not knowing if she ever going to see her son again. Alive. Dangerous place. I don't know. Whatever it was. Wooden basket. Miriam, when she had to go before the king and say, hey, you got a dude in your palace that's giving you, steering you wrong, giving you wrong information. My idea. Save the nation of Israel. I mean, of Jews. If you're not broken, you will be. I don't like this place he's put me in at all. But I'm kind of blazing a trail here, and so are many others. We're connecting. But I've been broken. Pretty, look at, it was four years ago, God, I put it out. Broken and contrite spirit, or trust, or through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I had some brain strokes, and the doctor report was moderate to severe brain loss. And I looked at him, I said, what are you talking about? And I did three MRIs. And they showed me parts of my brain. He said, this has died, this has died. And they're like, well, what do I do? And he said, well, it's not coming back. One of them was my balance. I couldn't even walk, guys. I fell probably 30 or 40 times. And I wouldn't get any warning. I would hit the ground full throttle. Sitting in that same chair, started crying. Literally, you would do. Oh, this isn't going to work. What if I fall in, in, in church? What if I fall at Walmart in Walmart parking lot? And people are already act like they're going to run you over anyhow. I'd be roadkill. You know, I'm going to fall on the steps and bust my head. I'd get no warning. It was like my legs just got cut off. I was like they didn't even exist. It hurt. I, or there was no, there was no crumbly, cringing pain. And suddenly I knew I was going to fall. Oh, yes, man. So I had to learn to literally trust in Jesus for every step I took. That's what the storm is coming. And the Lord spoke to me, and this is what he said. He said, Steve, I'm living in your brokenness. I'm dwelling in your brokenness. Okay, Lord, I'm listening. Look at Peter. He died me three times. Back at that same story. <clears throat> brokenness. Paul. Esther, Miriam, uh, Joe, Jonah, big one, David, broken. So they can dwell in us as a clean vessel. Right now, fast forward it. I'm really broken, guys. Spirit of pride. As witchcraft, I didn't think that was anywhere in my heart or in my brain or it was so buried I didn't even see it. I lived in it for so long. And I'm still reeling from the from the the, the, the destruction that's all around me. I'm cleaning up the mess and trying to not trying but following the Lord as best I can to clean it up, but it's still a wreck. Some things can't be cleaned up. And then, in the last year, I was hospitalized, kicked out of the hospital, with two infected toes. They told me they're going to cut the whole front of my foot off. Broken, guys. Well, the doctors know get rid of the infection first because what they didn't realize I was praying about that and that's what the Lord told me to tell them get rid of the infection first and they wouldn't listen 
Because I had good insurance, and one, they were talking about cutting the whole front of my foot off in four months in the hospital. You making the bill? That's what they want. Sorry to say. Then I had some brain strokes. And then Elvis had really left the building. God, I lived in the same area, Dallas, Garland, that same area. I've been at this intersection thousands of times, and I was four blocks from where I was going. Light turned green, and I couldn't move. I froze. Car started honking at me. I pulled over. It took me 10 minutes. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what to do. Elvis had left the building, guys. That's just, so that's been really difficult. He's going to see me through it, though. And then the reason why I was in the hospital was because I'm diabetic and there was silver lining in it while I was in the hospital but they gave me a different medicine. Insulin, but it's fast acting. Well, it took a while, but man, there was time when it was done with it. So much, it just plummeted. And I pulled into Walmart parking lot. I didn't even know if I was gonna make it in the store. I couldn't even think straight, guys. I should have just pulled up the front of, you know, it was an emergency. He pulled up to the front door and ran in. That's what I did. I, but I looked for a parking spot, and there was no, no handicapped parking spots even. I parked at the end of, far away, kind of, from the door, and then there was no cars. I couldn't even walk. I was panicking. I ran to the grapes, ate a bunch of grapes, and then I ran to the, the cookie aisle and ate a bunch of cookies. It took me about 20 minutes. I was sweating. Couldn't think. Man, it was probably dropped. And then and that happens, you know, more than it should. So I'm facing three different life challenges, and some of them are life threatening. Broken. And, you, you know, like I said, you don't think, oh, God wouldn't do that. Like I said, look, at, look, look, look through the Bible, guys. Getting a broken. Samson was broken. Pick one. I said Job. You know, we all know the main ones, but broken. Children of Israel were broken. In the wilderness. For 40 years, some of them didn't make it. That's what I'm telling you is coming, the storm. If we don't connect, we're not going to make it. Oh, God wouldn't do that. Well, what did he do that, that when they to the ones that complained about the manna from heaven. Read it, guys. It's in the Word. They didn't make it. They were still his people, still the ones he wanted to make it. They didn't make it. I think I'm making this up as the five foolish virgins. Five wise said, man, you know, we got just enough oil to get us there. Go to the buy and sell, and they did. By the time they got to the door, it was closed. And they knocked, and they said, Depart from me for you, because your work was iniquity. Others, same thing. Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we raise the dead, cast up, you know? It's that scorecard Christianity. Oh, I've got saved 10,000 people. Oh, I've saved, you know, a million people came to my church. That's pride, guys. It's all about you. It's not about nothing for God. There's no glory in it for him. It's all for you. Whatever the nonsense and the sin that's in our lives is coming out soon. I've been ministering these messages about storms for over two years. It's to break and shake and take the aisles out of our lives. This serious, guys, is a rubber meets the road message. You're either going to be in or out. It's a real deal. You're going to have the goods or not. And so we need to connect as a body because the hands need to feet. You know, and we want to be connected to the head.
meaning a lot of these hokey pokey people that claim to be apostles and prophets and and they wouldn't read the job description. The reason why they want to be an apostle or prophet is so that nobody can tell them what to do, including God. Selfish, prideful, sinful, arrogant. And listen to some of the stuff that the people say. So off the mark. all got some sin in our lives, guys, that we have to clean up. This is not a finger pointing. I'm all there better than you. I'm not. And I kind of screwed up quite a bit in some areas. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, but this is another one of my messages. I'm going to end with this. He doesn't want your wealth and fame, but your guilt and shame. What he wants is to go to the darkest, deepest, hurtfulest spots in your life that you won't even go. You got 27 locks on it and 45 feet of concrete around it, a nuclear proof bunker. Dark, ugly, smelly. Sin's death, but it's there. You don't even know it's there, some of us, because it's been with us for so long. Chains of darkness, demonic strongholds in our lives. We've all had them. Many of us might have been delivered of a lot of them. Some of us still have them. Some of us still have major and some of us still have minor sins. Whatever it is, it's got to come out. There's one preacher I sat under, he used to say, if it doesn't come out in the wash, it'll come out in the dryer. It's coming out, guys, of our lives. But we have to connect now, and the reason why we have to connect is because we can help each other start whatever, you know, it might be seeing each other and, and you know, being accountable. To, I don't know. But we've got to connect because there's a harvest out there. And it's not in your air-conditioned padded seats in some fancy church. It's on the streets. A friend of mine put it out. Most of the people that Jesus sat with and dealt with, most Christians in churches wouldn't let him even let him in. They're too busy, too holy, too too much of stuff that's not from God. Guys, read that one about the storm. You don't believe me? Then the spiritual realm, fine. But it was two major retailers I talked about, and they and a month ago, maybe two in two weeks ago. So it was a little bit ago, but not that long ago. But I had that message for over a year. And when I told people, they looked at me like I was nuts. They were in the news, in the financial news. Bloomberg, financial news, probably maybe one of the top, you know, ones or whatever. Those guys and gals study and, you know, maybe smart in that area. I don't know about other areas, but, you know, they know what they're talking about, at least somewhat, not in the spiritual, but in the natural, and about the money. And one of the top analysts, you know what he said? America, you better wake up and see what's going on in this company. And then two weeks later, the other one was in the news. Same news. Same, same pretty much the same issue. The truckers, the, our leadership, the Congress, you know, Facebook, it's not social media, it's social injustice. Cut you off, shut you up. I'm, I will end with this. No, because I just, I'll end with this. It's time to connect. If you want to connect with Jesus alive in America, I'm about to change it, with the name anyhow. So it's going to be called Jesus Christ in You, the Hope of Glory.
I just haven't got to it yet because of the reeling from all the pride and pain and suffering that I've caused others and myself and the mess. The brain not working real well. Getting there and God's going to heal it. You know. I should be in the same nursing home as our leadership. You know what I mean? Or assisted living. Not. Under so much grace from God. Healing grace. According to the medical science, I shouldn't even probably be here. But I am. Because according to God, different story. We gotta connect, guys. It's not with me. Whomever I mean many of us the Lord's directing us and leading us. I heard this other good post. It said our biggest issue isn't hearing God's word. It's obeying what he's telling us to do. I'm telling you, it's time to connect. Because this headless body is going to be destroyed. The true body of Christ is going to stand. There's a storm coming, guys. We can't stop it. No amount of prayer, fasting, dedication, weeping and praying between the ports. It's not, it's not, it's coming because God's allowing it. Because he wants his body to be cleansed and purified. It's going to be that refiner's fire, guys. I will end with this. Years ago, got in a motorcycle wreck. Probably 19. Well, it, the bike landed on top of my leg and drug me across the pavement until it stopped. A whole, at least this, you know, my whole ankle pretty much was messed up. Tar, and, you know, it didn't bleed because it, it was hot out of Texas and just kind of got sealed up with dirt and tar. And, I even drove the bike home and it was totaled. But I was at the doctor and this nurse came in to debridle it or whatever you call it. You know, but because it was such a big wound, they couldn't they couldn't come in with the scissors and just kinda of cut stuff up. She had this brush, the kind that you use that those really hard ones that you use for hard, dirty, hard to get out stains and whatever, you know, concrete or your sink or whatever. And I felt like she, she reminded me of Herman Munster. It was like, man, no pain medicine. It was, it was true grit. Grit my teeth to keep from screaming. And she scrubbed. Oh. This, and then I went to the doctor a week later. And he said, man, if this doesn't start healing, you know, gangrene's going to set in and we're going to think about cutting stuff off. Mm -hmm. I had a really good prayer meeting with God. Never cut it off. He healed it. But I'm telling you, it's time to connect as the body, the true body. It may be in church, but it's probably not. Because the real harvest is out in the street. Not in some fancy air conditioned building. And all the millions that you collected and all the millions of people that you saved. And keep a list. It's not, it's not, like I said, it's not a baseball game, guys. Chunk that. Be about your father's business, but let's connect. Whether it's connecting with me or your local, whomever. Whatever it's God's telling you to do. You may be far away in a different state. We'll still come down if you can, but that doesn't mean you have to pray about it. who you're supposed to connect with and don't connect with the devil's kids just to make a bunch of money and tell you and, and tell people how blessed you are and what God did that's when he's cleaning up guys love you let's connect Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com 
email me. Come on down. Or come on over if you're local. I'm going to have to pray about it too. About, about if you're the right person to connect with. And you're going to have to pray about it. If I'm the right person to connect with. And I've got other the people you can connect with. I don't know where it's going to land, guys. But I know we've got to connect. It doesn't have to be me. But it has to be the rest of the body. We've got to start connecting, guys. Love you.